This is Rick from Opto Sigma, and in today's discussion, we're going to be talking about goniometers. And not just goniometers, but I also want to talk about the best goniometer ever made. So with that, let me get into some of the details of goniometers themselves. Goniometers, of course, provide adjustment, and as you know, there are a total of six degrees of freedom out there, and uh, three of those degrees of freedom are linear and the other three are angular, pitch, yaw, and roll. And so when you talk about a goniometer, a goniometer provides pitch axis adjustment when mounted to a flat surface like an optical table. But a goniometer has uh, something special about it, and that is its axis of rotation is situated above the mounting surface of the goniometer so that when it's adjusted, it actually scribes a perfect circle about that point. If no one's ever seen what a goniometer looks like in action, it looks a little bit like this. It goes back and forth, as you can see, and you can kind of imagine in your mind that it's rotating about an invisible axis located above that platform surface. Now, that axis of rotation is special. You can see, and here's an example, that goniometers have many different sizes of at rotation axis height, right? Okay, that's good for variety, but there's something even more special about it, and that is when you stack them, you put the first goniometer and there's this axis of rotation, the second goniometer fits right on top, and look what starts to happen. The axes of rotation coincide with each other. And that's how they're made, right? So you can have multiple axes of rotation heights, but when they're all stacked, it's a single axis of rotation. And that's what makes, it, makes these things special. So when you stack these together, and typically you don't stack them like this, you stack them orthogonally to each other. But what they end up looking like is this. So rather than scribing a circle, two stacked goniometers will actually scribe out a sphere when it's adjusted. Now, if no one's ever seen a two-axis goniometer in motion, it looks worth rotating not about a line or an axis, but rotating about a single point. And this is what allows it to create a sphere. Now, one of the things I want to talk about, as I mentioned earlier, was the best goniometer ever made. And to do that, I want to talk about kind of the basic options that are available right now. And there really are two. First is the dovetail type goniometer, which is usually made of aluminum or brass. And also, if you want something a little bit uh, more accurate, you can go to a crossed roller bearing goniometer. And those perform very well. Um, however, one of the best goniometers ever made was made using a special process where the bearing ways are machined directly into the top and bottom plates of the goniometer. And you can see that in comparison with what I show here. This is above the cross roller bearing goniometer. And one of the things you immediately notice is how many separate parts there are in the cross roller bearing goniometer. And one of the things you realize very quickly is when you have this many parts held with screws, those screws can become loose over time and as soon as that happens, the preload of the stage is gone and it no longer functions. But with the EXC, these goniometers right here, there are no screws and therefore there's no preload to lose. Um, the bearings, as I mentioned before, are machined directly into the top and bottom plate. And this makes this goniometer the best goniometer ever made. One thing you'll notice is you may see a lot of dovetail and cross roller bearing goniometers, but you will never see one of these types of goniometers made by any other manufacturer out there. Um, and it's, it is a definitely patented process and design. So with that, let me jump into the specification options for goniometers. Uh, the first is material, and they're typically made of brass, aluminum, or hardened tool steel, as we saw with the extended contact goniometer. Um, then going to bearing types, um, you can have the dovetail, uh, the crossed roller bearing uh, goniometer, or as we talked about earlier, the extended contact, which is 
the one where the bearings are actually machined into the top and bottom plates of the goniometer. As far as movement goes, you have the choice of either a worm gear or a micrometer. Um, loads can be up to 30 kilograms, so quite high. But one of the main things I really want to touch on here is center axis displacement and how the different types of bearing ways can have different results here. So first, we have the dovetail, and that provides a center axis displacement of 100 microns. And that's pretty good. That's, that's actually a pretty good uh, center axis displacement. But if you want something better, you go to cross roller bearings, and that gives a dramatic improvement down to 20 microns. And you think, well, it can't get better than that. But in reality, it does. Look at this. With the extended contact bearing mechanism, you get seven microns of center axis displacement. And that's amazing. Now, the question is, what type of application would this be used in? And there's actually a really good one here. One is the specialized miniature five axis CNC based milling, grinding, and polishing machines. And these things are designed to support electrical and physical feature analysis techniques. So it's basically used for test preparation. The goniometer itself is used to um, provide pitch and yaw flattening of the sample. And it's needed because there's vibrations in the system. And as we talked about earlier, if you have vibrations, you can lose your preload. But with the extended contact goniometer, that's impossible. And that's why these things are so popular in these types of applications. So let's move on here. One of the things I really want to talk about here is the benefit of Opto Sigma goniometers. And to start off with, we provide the industry's best goniometer in the extended contact goniometer. As, and we talked about the, the details of that earlier. The other benefits we have are, of course, uh, selection options. There are 200 plus different SKUs you can pick from. Um, additionally, there's uh, the compatibility, and that is that these goniometers are perfectly compatible with all like size linear stages, tilt stages, and rotation stages. So as you see off to the picture on the right, this is a six axis, six degree freedom stack, and within that is a goniometer, and they all perfectly mount to each other. There's no adapter plates needed. Um, another huge benefit is the size options. You can get a platform size as small as 15 millimeters, and it goes all the way up to 20, 120 millimeters. Um, the other nice thing is if you're in a lab, uh, any goniometer that's 65 millimeters and up is directly compatible with an optical table. So you can mount it directly there, again, with no adapter plates. Um, we also have the most stack heights in the industry. So whereas most other companies provide maybe two stack heights or three, we provide four and five per goniometer. So a lot of options there. And last but not least, um, we offer a vacuum compatible version of the goniometers. And these are off the shelf. They're not specialty items and you don't have to wait for them. They're in stock and ready to go. So with that, I uh, just want to thank you guys all for attending uh, this talk. Um, I hope you've learned a lot here and um, that you've uh, learned a lot about OptoSigma goniometers and the ranges and the performance levels that you can get. So thank you very much for joining and we'll talk again soon. Bye now.